Hi, I'm Greg Robinson, Program Director of the James Webb Space Telescope and NASA's Science Mission Director. And I'm going to give you a status of the development progress uh, for the observatory. So on my uh, first slide, it's really a video of uh, what we've done and, and what's to come. So enjoy. Constructing the James Webb Space Telescope, a mission led by NASA with its partners, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, requires the collaboration of thousands of people from across the United States, Canada, and Europe. The James Webb Space Telescope is the most ambitious and complex space science mission humanity has ever undertaken. Webb is NASA's highest priority science mission. This is the optical and science segment of the Webb Space Telescope in one of the largest clean rooms in the world at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. This half of the observatory element successfully passed a series of rigorous vibration and acoustic tests to ensure Webb's optics and science instruments can handle the stresses of launch. This element was packed and transported to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas for cryogenic testing inside its massive test facility simply called Chamber A, a national historic landmark for its work during the Apollo missions. Successfully completing the optical telescope element was a significant milestone. And now we look forward to completing final tests of the spacecraft element and then integrating both halves into the observatory. Now I'm going to uh, give you a, a little background on some of the uh, amazing technologies and the partnership and then the uh, progress to date. Uh, as some of you, you already know, uh, NASA has a, has a very strong partnership with the European Space Agency and Canadian Space Agency. And those are two uh, international partners for James Webb. Uh, as you can see in the U.S., uh, uh, most of the country touched uh, the telescope in, during this development, uh, 29 states to be exact. And in Europe, 14 countries uh, actually took part in development of, of James Webb. And as we move forward, uh, I'm going to show you more on, on some of the technologies. So here you will see the, the telescope. That's really the, the bread and butter, uh, so to say, of, of the uh, James Webb, uh, which will collect the, the light from uh, deep space. Uh, this was one of the uh, very unique technologies that was developed. Uh, and a couple of unique things about it. Uh, first of all, it's uh, six and a half meters, which is unprecedented. Uh, Hubble, uh, it was 2.4 meters, uh, so quite a quite a big difference in size. And of course, if you're gonna look off into the depths of the universe, you need very large uh, telescopes. So that's the big eye, which will feed the instruments. And uh, another unique thing about uh, the telescope itself, uh, this is gold-plated beryllium. It's very light, just a small amount of gold, about a golf ball size. Um, so not a lot of gold, but it's extremely efficient uh, in uh, light reflection. Uh, on, and as we move forward, I'll continue to thread on some of the technologies. Uh, so here, this is the top level configuration for the for James Webb. As you can see up top, we've talked about the telescope. You see the primary mirror facing you, secondary mirror sticking out uh, just to the left of that. Uh, the sun shield, which I'll show you in a couple of minutes, in the middle, and the spacecraft bus on the bottom. And on the back side of the telescope, that's where we have the instrument package, the integrated science uh, package, what we call it. Um, and that's on the back side of the telescope. And the telescope and the instrument uh, package was actually uh, developed at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And the, uh, the Sunshield and spacecraft were developed by Northrop Grumman uh, in Redondo Beach, California. And of course, I'll, I'll mention one of our other uh, primary contractors in just a few minutes. And on the back side of the, the telescope, the instruments, uh, we have contributions from ESA and from the European Space Agency. And as we move forward, we will touch more 
a few more technologies and comparisons to Hubble. And the reason we do comparisons with, with Webb is just the magnitude of it, uh, the size and lightweight, I might add. I talked about the telescope. As you can see down at the bottom, it's a little faint. Uh, you can see the size of, of the Hubble telescope on the left and the Webb on the right. And I think we have a person standing there. So it gives you some scale, but uh, a huge significant difference. And as you saw in the video, uh, this was tested. Uh, it's what we call thermovac, in this case, cryogenic testing uh, at the Johnson Space Center in the historic Apollo uh, Chamber A. And we took this down to extreme cold temperatures uh, to simulate uh, surviving in space. And it, it worked like a charm. And as we move forward, uh, uh, some of the structural technology, uh, what we call the, the backplane and the structure, and this is really what holds the, the entire structure observatory together. And this is uh, very lightweight. Uh, you can see it's, it's pretty large in size, uh, but uh, graphite composite um, and machining, a lot of engineering went into this, uh, made it extremely lightweight. And... And this is, uh, stability is critical for James Webb when you're peering out into space, just like taking a picture with a camera, steady is important. And this is uh, as steady as it gets. Uh, so some really, really fine engineering uh, and development uh, with this structure. And as we move forward with uh, some of our other technologies, the, the uh, iconic sun shield. So this is a five layer membrane size of a tennis court, and often uh, joke about uh, watching Venus and Serena hit balls back and forth on this. It's, it's truly that size. Uh, this was a very unique first-time technology. Uh, these uh, Kapton uh, layers here uh, had a lot of uh, new technology built into them. And once that technology was matured, we had to get that into a, a system, uh, the Sunshield system, which is folded up and deployed in space. And of course, we, we do that on the ground multiple times, which I will mention in just a few minutes. Uh, so this was uh, one of the biggest challenges in, in developing James Webb in, in addition to the amazing instruments. And as we move along, the, the, um, I talked about the mirror quite a bit. And this is the, the deployment of the secondary mirror. This is actually taking place uh, in the high bay, in the clean room, in the INT facility. And, and as, <clears throat> as this video starts to run, you will see the, the telescope, the secondary actually deploy away from the primary mirror. And so we do this on the, on the ground. And what you cannot see in the video are some uh, very light lines running from the telescope up to the ceiling uh, to offload uh, gravity effects because in space, this is deployed. Uh, with no gravity. And, and as most of you know, the, the light uh, from the universe will come into that primary mirror and go into the secondary, which feeds the information into the, to the instruments. Uh, so that was a very successful deployment, and that's the last time uh, that will be deployed on Earth. So this video has some um, development and deployment uh, information in it, so enjoy. Next slide shows the, the essential full attention. And actually, we, we, com we just completed the last, the final deployment and tensioning 
of the sun shield. Uh, so the next time it's deployed, it will, it will be on orbit and, and getting ready to, for this amazing mission. And, and uh, going forward, you will see the, the telescope fully deployed. Uh, and we say the wings are deployed. Uh, if you look at the telescope, the 18 uh, mirrors, and there are three on each side. And those actually, those are the wings. They actually fold back, they're stowed backwards uh, in the launch configuration. And on orbit, they actually deploy to complete the full telescope. Uh, so, and, and as we, we move forward, uh, just a few uh, photos of some of the assembly. So here we've completed the, the, um, all of the environmental testing. We're getting, getting the sun shield ready for uh, deployment, for its final deployment. And you can see the telescope there. And we actually move the telescope up. We call it deploy uh, to, so we can make room for the sun shield to start its actual deployment. Uh, so, um, and on the, on the next one, you'll see the, the, what we call the UPSs, that's where the, the sun shield actually deploys downward and back up. Uh, and this is the stowed configuration for launch. Uh, so you can see the telescope folded up and same with the sun shield. Uh, so that, that will be the, the last configuration we see before we launch. And, and moving forward, we always talk about the flight segment so we have a very important ground segment that's managed uh, by the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. So they they developed our ground system and they would do mission operations just like they they're doing currently for Hubble. Uh, we've completed many rehearsals. Uh, geez, probably going back about a year and a half. Those rehearsals continue. We recently completed the first launch readiness exercise rehearsal, and we have another one coming up shortly. Uh, so a lot of really good work uh, by the by the institute with the ground system and preparation for mission operations. Uh, so looking forward to continuing that work and getting us in a, a ready to uh, operate mode. And going forward, the um, I mentioned the environmental testing is completed. This is after we return from the environmental facility of acoustics and vibration. We're back in the high bay and starting final deployments and including up to the sun shield deployment. Uh, so I just wanted to give you some photos, some real hardware uh, to show progress. Sometimes you read about these things, but it doesn't really bring it home. And, and going forward, uh, so a lot of work has been accomplished. We have a lot of risk behind us, still some challenges to get there. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot of work left. We're doing all of the post-environmental deployments and closeouts. Um, and later, well, in, in mid-spring, mid we will start what we call the final build and closeout of the observatory and get, it, get ready to, to ship it down to uh, South America, to Karoo. So uh, it's coming pretty fast, and I'm looking forward to it. And, and uh, as we move forward, as I talk about launching orbit, so we're actually launching from South America, from French Guiana, that's part of the European Space Agency contribution. Uh, the launch services. So we're flying on an Ariane 5 rocket uh, that has a lot of very, very good history. And uh, I mentioned the shipping. We were shipped from uh, Southern California down through the Panama Canal down to French Guiana. And we're planning to ship in August of 2021. So it's coming pretty fast. And so thank you. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this status. Uh, and soon we will be shipping launching and starting operations. Thank you again.